Hey guys, it's Tilly and today I am back with a top 10 favorite YA contemporaries video. So in 10th place we have The Unexpected Everything by Morgan Matson. This is my first ever Morgan Matson book and I was so amazed by her writing, it was amazing. So this book is about Andy and she has her entire life planned out. She knows what college she's going to, she has a summer internship planned out and then there is a scandal with her dad and then the internship gets pulled out from underneath her and she is completely lost. She has no plans, all she's got is her amazing friends and then all of a sudden her life changes. She decides to get a dog walking job and prior to this Andy has never had any dog experience but still she ends up finding and walking this big fluffy dog here who currently belongs to this amazing beautiful guy called Clark and they end up you know getting a little bit of romance happening between them and basically you just follow her summer in this book with her friends and Clark and her job and it's a really fun easy summary read and it was so breezy and it was just so good I laughed in it and I was sad during it and it's just amazing. In ninth place we have You Know Me Well by Nina LaCour and David Levithan. This is a really good LGBT read but one of the things that I really liked about it most is it has such a big friendship aspect in it and I do enjoy my romance books but I love books even more that have a strong basis for friendship. So you have Mark and Kate and um, they both go to school together. Uh, Mark is gay and Kate is a lesbian but they don't really know each other that well until they see each other out during Pride Week um, and basically it is the night of their lives because Mark is in love with his best friend who is not sure feels the same way and Kate is basically going to meet the girl of her dreams but she's so terrified that she actually runs away and so they both help each other to pretty much complete their dreams. In eighth place, and I might be cheating a little bit, but it is the Anna and the French Kiss trilogy. So you have Anna and the French Kiss, Lola and the Boy Next Door, and Isla and the Happily Ever After, and this is by Stephanie Perkins. Basically this is like pure romance, happy go lucky books, and it all features different characters, but all the books do have strings intertwined between them all. Um, so some of the characters in the first book appear in the last book, and basically if you guys read them you'll see how they're all connected. So Anna and the French Kiss is the first one. So the first book is about Anna, and she is sent to France by her dad to go to a boarding school. Um, she's originally from the USA and she has no idea what she's doing. She can't speak French and she has no friends and it's basically her journey at school there, especially when she meets beautiful Attain St. Clair and um, she develops a crush on him but he has a girlfriend but things are just never as what they seem. Seventh place we have a book that I hold really close to my heart. I love this one and this author's writing is amazing. I actually wrote a fan fiction for when this book ends which I'll leave a link to below. It's just like a small chapter. It's nothing big because I just couldn't do justice as much as this book did. Um, and that is Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. And for those of you who know Rainbow Rowell is like a genius when she comes to writing. She is really witty and funny and charismatic and she writes the stories that just flow so well and you read them so quickly and you just enjoy every second of them. So this book revolves around Eleanor who is this crazy redhead girl who comes from a really tough family. She doesn't have much money, she doesn't have any friends, um, her family's having a lot of problems so she's got yeah really rough life. And then you have Park who basically he doesn't have many friends either but he's got parents that love him and his home and their lives become intertwined when Park stands up for Eleanor one day when she's being bullied and they pretty much just have this adorable little romance and this friendship too that evolves between them and it's so heartbreaking but also just so cute at the same time. Next up we have another one of my favourite books ever and that is On the Jellicoe Road by Melina Marchetta. She's also an Australian author so get behind that. She's written so many amazing books too like The Piper's Son, Saving Francesca and Looking for Ella Brandy but this one is my favourite out of them all and it was just so good. Basically you have two different timelines in this book. One that is set 15 years give or take before and then you also so you have the present time. So you have Taylor who basically like is the leader of this boarding school um, and she is a rivalry with another boarding school and the townie kids as well and they all do these different games um, to pretty much keep up territory wars that happen. This territory game was created long before then. Hannah who is Taylor's friend has gone missing and so she also has this kind of mystery part of trying to figure out what happened to her friend while also finding other clues about a story that happened in this book as well. So it's real mystery but it's also really fun and also terribly heartbreaking in parts and I probably am not doing that justice but trust me you guys need to read this. This is where I got Super Half Me. These top five books are like some of the best books I have ever read in my entire life and you guys need to read all of them um, but in fifth place we have Bird by Crystal Chan and I did not know what to expect when I got this book. Um, the cover is very plain but also very beautiful at the same time and so I really had no idea what I was getting into but this book is a 
about a young girl called Jewel and um, the day that she was born her brother actually passed away and so her family believes it's kind of like some sort of curse um, her granddad has never spoken a word since she was born and it's just super heartbreaking and you're reading this book and you just want to dive through the pages and give Jewel a hug and tell her it's going to be okay. But then one day Jewel meets a strange boy who becomes her friend and her only friend and her life starts to change. Um, her mother comes out of her shell, her granddad and her, like, they have this friendship and basically it's, honestly, I was in tears by the end of this book and I cannot tell you but you have to read it. Like, it is nothing that I have ever read before and I was so amazed. Crystal Tran has amazing writing and if you guys do anything, read this book. I read this book a very long time ago, but one thing I remember is absolutely bawling my eyes out and feeling so hollow once I finished it. And that is The Last Time We Say Goodbye by Cynthia Hand. So the main character is Lex and her brother has recently killed himself and her entire life has changed after that moment. So it's basically the story of Lex trying to put her life together, but there is one thing that is stopping her and it is the fact that she has one missed call and a message from her brother the night that he killed himself. And she can't bring herself to face that yet and it was just so sad like I know I've used the word heartbreaking so many times but this truly was you are following the story of this girl who is just trying to survive this tragic thing that happened and her struggles and her successes and it was just so real. I just want to give an honourable mention to Love Letters to the Dead. I completely forgot about this book, um, but it was like sitting right there. I don't know how I missed it. This one probably would have been on par with it the last time we say goodbye. Basically, you follow this girl called Laurel whose sister um, passed away and no one is sure if it was suicide or whether it was an accident, but Laurel basically writes this in a format where she writes to people who have died. So basically, it starts off with her saying, Dear Kurt Cobain, and then talking about the story. But little does everyone know there's a deep secret that that happened to Laurel um, that had to do with her sister and so she has never forgiven her sister and so she's not entirely sure how to mourn her without forgiving her first so you go on this absolutely gut-wrenching journey with this poor girl who is trying to decide what's right what's wrong and how she can forgive her sister. Third place we have one of my all-time favorite authors and that is The Messenger by Marcus Zusak. I have three copies of this book because I absolutely adore it. Marcus Zusak um, he also wrote The Book Thief and When Dogs Cry um, but this one is seriously an underrated book by him and more people should totally read it it is completely different from the book thief but it is just as amazing. So you have Ed Kennedy who is a stock standard guy, he has no girlfriend, he has a dog, he has a run down house and he's in love with one of his best friends but one day he accidentally helps to stop a bank robber and that is when his entire life changes. An ace which is like a card shows up with instructions on who he should help or hurt to better people's lives and basically he becomes the messenger but no one knows what his complete mission is, who is sending these cards and you follow his journey and it was just so great. I absolutely love the story and I'm sure you guys will too. This was such a hard decision trying to choose between these two because I have two different reasons to completely love these books and it's so hard to pick so I have to do it though. So in second place we have The Sidekicks by Wilka Starkus and Wilka Starkus is another Australian author. He's absolutely amazing. He wrote the first third and I think it's Lola something. He's gonna hate me for not remembering that one but it was his first book but basically The Sidekicks is my all-time favorite book by him and it was so good. This book really hit home to me but it also helped me to open up my heart and accept something that happened in my life that is very similar to this book. So you have three main characters and there's three perspectives that go on through this book. So you have Ryan, Harley and Miles and they all had one common friend and that was Isaac and unfortunately Isaac passes away early on in this book and we have to read the after math that happens between for these three boys who are completely different from each other like it's described as the swimmer the rebel and the nerd and it's tough because these characters all believe that Isaac was what made them them and so they have to try to figure out their lives without him who they are and who their real friends are too and it was just so good and laugh out loud funny and absolutely tear jerking at the same time and for the book in first place you guys can probably guess it I absolutely boast about this book all the time it is my all-time favorite book and I just absolutely love it and if you guys are going to take any book out of this pile to read read this one but also read many of the other ones because that's just as amazing and that one is Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe by Benjamin Elias Sayens and guys you need to read this absolutely beautiful breathtaking book that is not only written in the most amazing form 
forever, but it has characters that you will absolutely fall in love with and realness in it that you just can't help but let hit home. My heart swelled two times as big when I read this book. I am absolutely in love with it and the characters and just everything. So you have two characters who are basically contrasts of each other. You've got Aristotle who is this troubled little kid who can't swim. He's got a poor family and his brother's in jail and things just aren't going too well for him. He's a little bit of like a troubled child and then you meet Dante who is this absolutely perfect child with his family who just loves him and he's so kind and gentle and we all love him so much and these boys become really good friends at this local swimming pool and you follow their story of their friendship Dante helps Aristotle to like learn more about himself and come to terms with things that have happened and honestly like I had no idea what to expect. This book is a little slow to get into, but if you just push through, I can assure you, you guys will absolutely love this book. So it is not only a book that deals with friendship and family and love and first beginnings and like puberty and everything, it deals with like mental issues, depression and Oh, it is, it's everything in one book. I think this is a book that almost everybody should read because it not only helps you to learn about these characters, but also you can compare it to your own situations and learn from it yourself. There is something that everybody can take out of this book. So please, please, please read this book. Um, as you can see, it has many awards. It deserves every single one of them and more. It is amazing and it totally deserves first place on my top 10 YA contemporary list. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I should hopefully be back with one soon. And until then, tell me guys what your favorite all-time YA contemporary bookies and why, or if you guys agree with any of the books on my list, I'm so happy to talk about absolutely any of them. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys have a wonderful bookish day and great things happen to you. And until then, I will see you later. So this is the fifth book in the Friend of Glass series. Basically, we pick up after um, Aileen has saved Dorian from getting his collar broken off.